loans give more returns. Get more security and more interest on your fixed deposits from Sri Lanka's largest finance company, LOLC Finance. solution to make your world a better place don't litter care for your community by disposing waste properly refresh Sri Lanka for a civic minded society in association with AICPA and SIMA CA the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka and 99X LMD the voice of business Hello and welcome to LMD TV. Tonight on the forum, we're talking about future-proofing Sri Lanka's higher education sector. And with us, we have the director of the Career Guidance Unit at General Sir John Kotalawa Defence University, Dr. Namali Sirisoma. Welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you for inviting me for the session. So to start off our discussion, uh, right now, I think Sri Lanka is battling one of the worst chapters, the most challenging chapters in its timeline. And we always say that education is very important to ensure that our future is stable, especially that our future generations are equipped to save the country. Against this backdrop, what is your assessment of the state of education in Sri Lanka, especially focusing on the higher education sector? Yes. Um, actually, this is a very good, timely topic to discuss because we are talking about uh, the higher education today and the future of the higher education. So if we talk about the future of our education system, of course, we have had a lot of technical colleges uh, in the past. So uh, the first university has been uh, established in 1942 at the University of Ceylon, uh, what we call University of Peradeniya today. But now, if you see the, the situation in the country, we see that there are uh, many opportunities for students. Uh, so the University Grants Commission, they, uh, they control, oh, there are several universities, state universities under them, like 17 state universities, two campuses, and they have 19 institutes. And there are six other universities which are under uh, different uh, ministries. So, but now we see that there are uh, many foreign courses recognized by the University Grant Commission, so that students have a lot of opportunities uh, in, in higher education in different areas. So, uh, you don't see the, the like extremely high competition now. When we have more opportunities, students have the flexibility to choose their uh, higher education path as well. That's a very good sign uh, in higher education sector in Sri Lanka. And talking about Sri Lankan education, we have an illustrious history of education from the Anuradhapura Kingdom or maybe before that. Um, when you look at how we are faring today compared to the region, how would you assess our evolution in terms of education? Yes, we know that we have a very good history in education and uh, uh, of course we have been trying to convert this as an education hub in the region, etc. But we have to see whether we have taken enough uh, effort to reach our target, whether we have uh, allocated enough finances or whether we have developed our technologies, facilities, and the resources, resource persons in the sector. Now, if we take India, for example, um, so they have taken a lot of uh, action to develop their technology education uh, in the region and they produce their graduates. 
in all the, the countries in the world. You can find Indian graduates in many parts of the world and they are in very high position. Um, but if we take Sri Lanka, at least we don't have our universities in the first uh, thousand uh, region or level in the world rank. So we are still in uh, 2000. So we should have some goals. We should have a program to reach in the world, world rank in higher positions. I can remember I visited the National University of Singapore somewhere in 2001. Those days they were in a, uh, in a lower rank and they had a target to reach the world rank uh, the university in 20 years. Now they have reached that, they have taken action. So we have to see uh, how we can compete um, and how we can reach these targets. We have the knowledge. Our people are very knowledgeable. But they are working in other countries and they show very good results. So I give you one example. You take uh, Bandula Vijay, for, uh, Dr. Bandula Vijay, for example. So he has done his higher studies in um, University of Southern California. He's from Gaul. And he has invented this uh, nested loop vascular stent. And I think some catheter also. Now the entire world is using those uh, uh, in, 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 in the medical surgery. But you, if you think that, okay, if he was in Sri Lanka, do you think he would be able to do that? And then Dr. Ray Jivadana invented uh, the tractor. But he had to sell his patent to Japan. So uh, we have the knowledge, but we don't take action uh, to take this knowledge of our findings to international or commercialize our, our research findings. So that is a very sad thing uh, to see. We spend a lot of money uh, to win the World Cup in cricket, but we don't take enough actions to become the world's best university. So you can see where we are. Those are some very, 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 very points. And you are absolutely right. Talking of opportunities in Sri Lanka, we are seeing that the private sector is thriving and they are giving everything from uh, degrees to doctorates. Uh, there's a lot of competition. But do you think that the industry has reached saturation point in terms of the private sector? I don't think we have reached the saturation point. But we have to do a very good need analysis on what we need and how many private universities we want and where we get the, 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 these opportunities because these are investors so uh, the students get uh, opportunities to do new degrees but have anyone uh, done any research to check the employability of these people uh, the, the recognition of these degrees in our the local market and the international market. Of course, if there are like international accreditation, your degrees will be recognized internationally. But if they do some traditional uh, degrees where uh, students find difficulties in, in finding jobs, that, that's not a good sign. So we should not continue that. So one reason for this is like, we don't have a proper regulator uh, for these private universities. So when they enter, when they offer courses, so we should have some understanding or some control on what sort of degree uh, they can do. And uh, we have to find out the, the quality of their uh, institutes, like classrooms, the lab facilities, other facilities, library facilities, and especially the resources. The, the lecturers and their qualifications. You can't just become a, a lecturer uh, after completing your degree, but you have to become a professional teacher. So in that case, you have to do some um, at least a certificate program. Now we have the CTHE courses that is certificate in teaching in higher education. Uh, at least they should have that qualification before they become a lecturer. But if you just let them start universities, um, with the mindset of okay, uh, letting these people to come here and invest 
and bring some uh, foreign currency, you will not reach that goal because ultimately they will take our money to their foreign countries, but we will not uh, reach our target. Uh, so that should be regulated properly. And even we can see that some, some private universities, they give honorary degrees. And, and there's no proper justification on how they uh, award this degree, the evaluation process, the quality of that degree, etc. So um, we should not undervalue our our uh, doctorate and degree uh, by uh, like letting them uh, do these things without any control. But we we can do that. Uh, through a proper regulatory framework. So there must be an institute uh, to regulate all these private universities. You spoke of something very important about quality, but before we get to that, uh, I wanted to ask you about another point that you highlighted, which is getting students to be ready for the industry. Um, we always say that uh, the higher education sector prepares people to be the labor force of the country tomorrow. How successful is the higher education sector, both public and private, in grooming industry-ready professionals? There are some complaints from the private sector, especially from the corporate sector, on the attitudes of these young graduates and uh, their knowledge level and the skills level, especially the communication skills, IT skills, so uh, we need to groom them. Now, if you see, uh, to ensure the quality, we have this uh, Sri Lanka quality assurance framework in, in uh, developing the curriculum. And for this uh, uh, vocational trainings, we have national vocational qualification framework. So we ensure the quality of the curriculum. Uh, of course, there are uh, areas and actions we take to develop their skills. But if the students are not ready uh, to develop their skills, if they target only on, on the knowledge or uh, target only on the exams, uh, we will not be able to groom these students. Now, you can see that a lot of uh, initiatives have taken by the industry, especially the corporate sector. Uh, they go to university and conduct programs uh, to groom the students and let them ready uh, to fit into their industry. Uh, so uh, this is a very good sign. Right? So they do it in private universities, even in state universities. But the students must be ready to accept. The students don't know the value of these programs. They don't know uh, how these things are helpful. Uh, when they find their first job. So first job is not just for survival uh, of the, the, the student or the graduate, but we have to ensure that they start with the proper job and they groom and they develop their career path. Uh, I think we have to take a lot of action. So there are career guidance units in all state universities. Even in the University Grant Commission, there's a, a standing committee for career guidance. Now, I think even in uh, schools, there are career guidance units. Um, but we have to check whether the, we, the, the things are happening, whether they do enough programs, or whether they do enough career counseling for students. On the other hand, the students also have a big responsibility. Uh, it's not only the skills, it's not only the knowledge. Your first class will not give you a, a, a good job with a very high salary if you don't have enough skills and if you don't have proper attitude. So uh, we have to understand that especially this new generation, that's a different generation. Uh, they call it a, a wrong generation. So, but it, it's not a wrong generation, but we have to groom them to fit into the industry because all your bosses are not from that generation. So there can't be any conflicts between the, the seniors and the junior uh, people. So uh, there must be some gradual uh, transmission uh, or transferring from 
university to industry and uh, we have to advise them and show their career path very carefully. You're absolutely right. I mean, like you said, there's a lot of initiatives, but it most of it rides on the student attitude. Why do you think that we have such an attitude in a gap? And are we too late to fix it when they come to higher education? Um, what are your thoughts on actually fixing this attitude? I think, yes. So this fixing attitude must start from their home. So parents have some responsibilities um, to go a child with positive attitude. So that is the starting thing. Even when we were small, uh, we were with our grandparents, then parents, and then teachers. So they showed us, uh, they, they told us how to be a, a good child. Or, right? Now, one problem I see is this um, tuition classes where students pay more attention on, on tuition and the, the, the learning or the listening part of uh, their education, then they get involved with uh, extracurricular activities or sports uh, in school. Now, people don't know, especially the parents don't know uh, the, the learning pyramid. There's a learning pyramid. So uh, when you listen to something, what you get, if you take the overall knowledge is 100%, what you get is only 3%. The listing will give you only 3%, right? So if you want to improve, you have to get involved in practical applications, uh, do some assignments, or do some field work, do some field visits, or teach somebody. That is how you improve. Um, taking students from one tuition class to another uh, will not uh, develop a proper uh, student and you know that so in school we have different periods the 40 minutes periods 45 minutes periods because the brain brain needs a break right so after 45 minutes you go to a different class so you refresh your brain so listening to one one lecturer one teacher for four hours five hours will not help much uh, so students have to do extracurricular activities in schools too. So don't let them uh, jump into this competition and then say, okay, you have you must get three A's, two A's, uh, or you must go to a state university uh, to do this uh, job, or you must become a doctor or an engineer. No, there are. There are so many jobs in the industry where you get more benefits than uh, doctors and uh, engineers. And there are many parts that you can groom yourself. What we have to teach our uh, students or the kids is to be a positive attitude person. If they are not groomed enough in their school education, when they enter the university, we cannot groom them because it's too late. It, it's so hard to change their mindset. We are trying so hard, but it's not easy. But if you get a, a student uh, who has been groomed enough with positive attitude, who is ready to take leadership action, then it's easy for us to uh, group them to the industry because in the university, so you have to do a lot of self-learning. We had to do a lot of activities. So we do even the research, we do applied research, uh, we do projects, but those are like related to the industry. So we have only three years or four years here, but that time is not enough to change their attitude if they have not grown enough during their school time. Very valuable advice there. Thank you, Doctor. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll resume our conversation on future proofing Sri Lanka's higher education sector. Display your brand message on digital screens at prime locations. At prime locations. The largest digital advertising network in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka. Emerging media. You're mobile, and so are we. Gets me going. Grab the Light 87 app at the Apple App Store or Google Play now. 87.8 and 87.6 Island Wide. Light 87.
Welcome back to the show. We're talking to the director of the Career Guidance Unit at General Sir John Kutalawal Defence University, Dr. Namali Sirisoma. Um, talking about a different area now, uh, we saw that with the pandemic, like you were saying, everything has become online. Everything is online and we are using a lot of technological uh, tools and techniques today. Um, how is Sri Lanka faring two years on? Um, are we at a good level? What more needs to be done to um, improve the technological aspect of education? Yes, so this is a very good uh, question and we have to think it's very serious. We know what happened during the pandemic. All of a sudden the entire country was locked down and we were asked to do online uh, lectures and classes. Students didn't know what Zoom is. Teachers didn't know. Uh, most of the teachers were like uh, not familiar with this IT application. So everybody started struggling. So it took a few months uh, at least to settle this to a certain extent. But we, we cannot say this is the end of the pandemic. So this is going to continue. Even, even um, if this COVID will we'll be like, uh, I don't know whether we, we will not get COVID again, but still we know that the, the third wave, fourth waves are coming, so there can be future waves. There can be other pandemics also. And now we are struggling with uh, fuel, so we have a fuel crisis. So we have to think of uh, ways of uh, minimizing uh, trips done by people or they should not travel unnecessarily. In that case, we need to continue this, but in hybrid mode, not 100% uh, online uh, teaching, but it should be some hybrid method. So in that case, we have to take actions to develop this. And uh, of course, in Sri Lanka, the data is expensive. We have to make it affordable for students. And, and then uh, even the laptops and uh, the chats, you know, those are like not affordable uh, in the current context. So, so there must be some ways uh, to enhance this, advance this, uh, because definitely we will need to continue this uh, hybrid mode teaching in the future. So this is not the end of uh, this online teaching. So, uh, government should take actions and they have to look into this factor seriously. And uh, Doctor, along with the positives, like you said, online is here to stay. Um, and along with all the positives that it brings, we are also seeing quality concerns in terms of easier tech-powered ways to plagiarize, to collude. Uh, I'm talking both from the student's perspective as well as from the educator's perspective. So what are your recommendations on how we can really uphold that quality while keeping the authenticity of education, you know, in a very strong way? Quality is very, very important in education. So that's a saying that um, if you want to destroy a country, so the first thing you have to do is destroy the education system of the country. Automatically, the rest will be destroyed. Uh, if we do not maintain the quality, so our next generation uh, will not have enough knowledge or there will be some uh, some gaps or gray areas. So in, in curriculum development, of course, we have this quality assurance framework to ensure the quality of the curriculum. And uh, in, in every five years time, uh, we, we need to do a major curriculum revision in every degree. But the student's perspective is, so when you are given an assignment, of course, it's a matter of Google, Googling and then identify all these uh, facts in few minutes. Now you don't need to memorize anything. Uh, everything is there in your mobile phone or in your laptop. But there's a serious concern now. The, the, now we know that students have tend to cut and paste all these things from the internet without any understanding. And now the, the most dangerous thing is there are firms who will do your assignments and thesis. So they, they advertise in public, okay, we will do your thesis, we will do your assignments, please talk to us. But no one has uh, prohibited these businesses. So then if, if we start cheating, and if we get the degree or get graduated with lack of knowledge or no knowledge, 
one day then they have to take decision when they uh, enter the industry or assume that that person becomes a lecturer or a teacher so how can that person teach for the next generation if that person doesn't have uh, enough knowledge so this is a very serious uh, matter and, and we have to take serious actions uh, to uh, avoid these now of course there are softwares to check plagiarism but on the same side there are softwares uh, to uh, like copy and paste but you will not get food uh, for plagiarism students find ways so that is the nature of students so it's a challenge for uh, the lecturers also now if i give you um, another example like old days people put the the thumb print because they could not write but now we can write by we ask them to put the 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 uh, fingerprint just to ensure the security or ensure that the same person is uh, or, uh, responsible or it's, it's that their duty or even like to unlock your mobile you use your, your fingerprint okay? so it doesn't mean that you can't write or you don't have the knowledge that's the change of the revolution in, in the technology so you do new things but people find ways of cheating and then you go back to square one i i think very soon um, the world will fed up with these systems and they will uh, go back to previous uh, sessions even i have seen that many academia say we don't want to give uh, take home assignments because Oh, right. uh, so they want to do classroom assignments. This is what I said. What we need is a person with good attitude. So if you don't have that attitude, so if you think that okay, I can take a degree, I can cheat and take a degree, that that, that person will not become a proper uh, graduate or proper decision maker or a proper leader in this system. So develop the attitude then and let them understand the value of education. And that will be the most challenging thing to do in education. Dr. Um, LMB recently launched a campaign called Refresh Sri Lanka, where we are encouraging a mindset change to create a more civic-minded society. In terms of education, what would your focus areas be to really ensure that Sri Lanka's future labor force is educated in such a way that they are also socially responsible? This is a very good move. No, so this is something lacking in Sri Lanka. Now, uh, now of course, uh, I can see that uh, in many degree programs, so they have incorporated this uh, CSR project as a part of their degree uh, to develop the teamwork, leadership skills, identify the social responsibility. Uh, so we need to do this from, from uh, the childhood because people should not be selfish they should learn how to respect others so this is a major lacking area in Sri Lanka now you take uh, if I give you an example say if you are a pedestrian so you don't respect the vehicle right so if you are a driver you don't respect the pedestrian so if you are in a higher position, you don't respect the, the, the people in, in your junior position. So uh, this, this is a big social problem in Sri Lanka. So we have to overcome this. So let them understand their social responsibility. Get these people in decision making. Get these people in development activities. So they can do a lot of analysis. So they, they are good in IT. They are good in... Uh, analytical skills so they are good in data collection and, and let them find out some uh, some uh, good outputs or some proposals they may think out of the box now we are talking about the, the new generation who thinks different so uh, I think this is a very good move and, and it should go in the national level so you have to give good publicity in that case now uh, in developed countries, even if you violate some road rules, so the first punishment is like you had to do some social work for like two, three days or five days, right? 
So we don't have that system. That is like you teach people or, or let them understand the importance of this, uh, the, the social work and let them understand their responsibility. So this is a very good move. I, I would really appreciate it. Thank you, Doctor. Before we wind up our conversation, any closing thoughts that you would like to share with our viewers? Yes. Um, in Sri Lanka, still people uh, have their traditional mindset. So they think that, okay, when they do a degree, they want to become these traditional jobs, to become a doctor, to become an engineer, become a pilot. So if you ask a student in, in uh, grade two or grade three, what do you want to be uh, in the future? They will simply say, I want to be uh, a doctor. Right? So nobody will say, I want to become a love station. Nobody would say, I want to become an entrepreneur. Uh, so we, we have a major responsibility to change the mindset of these people. So in that case, uh, the, the professional organizations also, they have a big role to play. Now, I'm the president of Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport. So, uh, we take a lot of actions to take this message to people. Uh, we take actions to take this message to parents. So likewise, uh, so we have to get involved these professional organizations, maybe like um, uh, improve the invention or let students to understand how important uh, to do a new uh, product or new businesses in this country uh, and then think out of the box. Right? So now we know we are in a highly uh, difficult period. So we have financial crisis, we have uh, economic crisis and then foreign currency uh, crisis. So if you want to get out from this, so we have to become one team we should have one goal right so once it is developed so when you get out from this of course you can divide again as you wish but to get out to stand up again so we should stand up as one thing we should not take this traditional mindset or uh, take this political agendas and all the stuff into your uh, life especially the young generation, I want to tell you that first thing is up or take, let's stand up first and then you can divide again. So that is what I want to tell you. Yes, let's definitely stand up as one to help the country out of the crisis. We were talking about future-proofing Sri Lanka's higher education sector. And with us, we had the director of the Career Guidance Unit at General Sir John Kutalawal Defence University, Dr. Namali Sirisoma. It was very nice having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me again. And, uh, this was a very good uh, session. Very exciting and insightful for us also. Thank you very much for joining us on the show. And to our viewers, until next time, take care. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching and stay safe.